everyone welcome back to my channel this is going to be part two of my journey to vet school today um, what's really ironic is the fact that I'm pretty sure I was wearing this exact same shirt and I know that I had my hair in a bun last week when I filmed this <laughs> so I'm actually going to re-record this part two because I just decided that I wanted to kind of give you guys a more full picture of my hours breakdown and my different animal experiences. So I'm re-recording it even though it looks like I'm wearing the exact same thing as I was last week. Um, also since last week I have completely rearranged my room again. Plants are still there. That's because they need the sun. But um, yeah, so I've completely rearranged my room again. But without further ado, here is part two of my journey to vet school. So to start things off, I had small animal experience, so dogs and cats. I had horses, which was my most number of experience hours. I had sheep, and then I got animal experience in African wildlife when I studied abroad in Botswana. My most number of hours was in equine because I spent about four summers working at a horse camp, and I also have worked at a few other various barns. So just my horse camp hours alone, I had over 1,600 hours. So that was by far my biggest number of hours. My dog and cat experience hours, I did own a dog, but I'm not counting that in this. My dog and cat animal experience hours in a vet clinic were 150 hours. I only had 150 hours of working in a small animal vet clinic compared to some people who have hundreds to thousands of hours. If that's you, good job. So I had equine handling experience and when I studied abroad, my animal experience there was both non-veterinary animal experience, veterinary animal experience, and then I also had research experience. So one thing to keep in mind, guys, when you're filling out your VEMCAS, is if you have one experience, count how many times I say experience. If you have one thing that you did that can count for multiple different areas of experience, count it as multiple different areas of experience. So for instance, I studied abroad, it was one trip, it was with the same professor the entire time, but the professor was a DVM and then we, she also had another DVM that we worked with as well. There was animal husbandry experience and cleaning enclosures and feeding the animals and so forth. There was animal veterinary experience and then there was research experience in a lab. So don't shortcut your hours. So I had small animal, equine, African wildlife, and then I also had sheep. So I volunteered at the sheep barn at Virginia Tech on campus for two semesters. I did one day a week. Highly, highly recommend volunteering or working and getting involved in your on-campus animal barns if they have them. I had no other way of getting sheep experience other than volunteering at our on-campus sheep barn. So I got to feed the animals, I got to work with the lambs, I bottle fed the lambs, I observed ewes giving birth, I got to help with the regular cleaning of enclosures and everything. It gave me a different aspect of animal experience that I wasn't really sure if I was going to get otherwise. I'm from Northern Virginia. I live about 20 minutes, 30 minutes outside of DC area. So there are farms, but there's not many farms. And it just like wasn't a type of experience that I had really necessarily planned on getting. I highly recommend taking advantage of any animal barns that you may have on campus or around campus or nearby to your house, whatever is easiest, whatever works, whatever is available. So I had a variety of animal experiences. 
I had some different types of veterinary experience. Again, only 150 hours of small animal veterinary experience. But, um, and then I also had research experience. So I got research experience during my study abroad. And then I also got research experience in an undergraduate lab at Virginia Tech. So the undergraduate lab at Virginia Tech did behavioral studies on camera capture and then also for a live camera feed of a bobcat. So I did two semesters of it. My first semester was tracking behavioral data for the bobcat. And then the second semester was scavenging data, photos of animals that were coming to feed on different carcasses that were placed out. It was very interesting because you got to see which animals interacted, how they interacted, which ones got to the carcass first, which ones got there last and so forth. So I did some various wildlife behavioral research in a lab at Virginia Tech. I do highly recommend also getting experience by working in some undergraduate research lab. It doesn't necessarily have to be super hands-on animal based. It can be, but it can also be different things as well. So besides the experience and everything that I had, I, like I said in my other video, did graduate a year early. So with graduating a year early, the reason why I did it was because I actually originally had simply planned on applying a year early. So at Virginia Tech, I always heard of people who had applied a year early, whether or not they got in, the main fact of doing it was simply because um, the admissions committee at Virginia Tech will give you feedback on your application if you don't get in. And so my thought process was, okay, if I don't get in, it's fine. I know that I want to go to this school so I can simply work on the things that they tell me to work on. So I planned out my schedule and my activities in undergrad so that I would have all of my prereqs completed by the time I was applying. So I applied for the fall after my third year. That was really difficult. By applying a year early, I got all my coursework done, all my prereqs done, and then I kind of unintentionally managed to also graduate a year early. So my thought process was, okay, if I don't get in this year early, I can gain experience. Otherwise, I can start on my master's of public health because I knew that I wanted to do that. You know, I would figure it out. Because I knew that I wanted to apply early, when you apply early, you're at a bit of a disadvantage. You are lacking a year of experience, you are lacking a year of GPA that could somewhat boost your current GPA, and you're also a year younger. So when I applied, I was 20 years old. My friends call me a baby. But anyways, you have to kind of show that you're mature enough. If they were to accept you a year early, you have to show that you are capable of handling the workload and the standards that they uphold during vet school. I knew that the odds of me getting in a year early were probably not all that great. I applied early with the mindset that, you know, maybe I wasn't going to be the strongest applicant. And I knew that I wanted to go to Virginia Maryland College of Veterinary Medicine because it was my in-state school and I did go to Virginia Tech for undergrad. So it only made sense for me to only apply there. If you are going to apply a year early, I highly recommend that you only apply to one, two schools max. And you really, really, really should be applying to your in-state school as well, if you have one, because your in-state school financially is going to put you into the least amount of debt, if that is any concern to you. If you are applying your normal after four years time around, I would say apply to no more than three to six schools your first application cycle, because at the end of the day, you could get into all six, you may only get into one, you obviously don't know, but each application fee is a lot of money, it is expensive to apply to vet school, and that is something that I usually try to advise to keep in mind. If you don't get in your first time around, you can always apply to way more your second time around. So I only applied to Virginia, Maryland, only got into Virginia, Maryland. Um, and Virginia, Maryland does do the multiple mini interviews. They also recently started doing CASPER as well, 
they started Casper, the application cycle, right after mine. So I never did Casper. I unfortunately don't have experience with Casper, but I know that multiple mini interviews, otherwise known as MMIs, can be extremely daunting for some. It's not a normal interview, really puts you on the spot. So I'm going to be doing an entirely different segment next week on how I prepared for and how I did well in the multiple mini interviews. So stay tuned for that. So that basically wraps up my journey to vet school. I have gone through one year at Virginia, Maryland, and after just one year at Virginia, Maryland, I know for a fact that I chose the school that was right for me. It has been amazing. I am able to get my dual degree in my Master's of Public Health and my Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. We'll see what the future holds, but, you know, Regardless of the ups and downs, it was a great journey. I do not regret anything, and I am definitely here to support you guys on your journey. If you ever want to chat, if you're ever feeling challenged by only having 150 hours of small animal veterinary experience, feel free to reach out. Anyways, that wraps up today's video. So I'll talk to you guys next week about the MMIs and how to prepare for them. And until then, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys then. Bye, guys!